Welcome to the Hey Soul Sister podcast, where Mel Histon will guide you through life's big questions and bring you one step closer to doing this crazy journey as best you can. This episode of Hey Soul Sister podcast is brought to you by the fabulous sponsor, What's On Newcastle. From the city of Newcastle, all you need to do is go to whatson.newcastle.newsouthwales.gov.au for all the best information about our city. Hey Soul Sisters, do you ever have trouble switching off your mind when you go to bed or find that your mind is constantly chattering away to yourself? I know I do that a lot. My mind always seems to be on a a switch on mode. Do you find that you wake in the middle of the night and lie there awake with your thoughts flying around your head and you just can't switch off? We've been through some unprecedented times where we've never been busier and the COVID has not helped. It's seen many of us have to change our lives and the way we do things differently, including the way we work, with many of us now working from home, which I know seemed a bit like a little holiday at first, or okay, well, it did for me, maybe not for everybody, but working from home actually has seen the boundaries between our personal and professional lives blur, and it can be harder for us to switch off. The fabulous Michelle Lutter, Tharap, is here today in the studio. We're going to have a bit of a chat about that because... Okay, I, you know, if you listen to Hey Soul Sister, Charlotta has been on the podcast many times. She's my mindfulness guru. <laughs> hey, Charlotta. Hi, Tony. And, you know, I'm constantly struggle with an overactive mind and overthinking mind at home and on my laptop all the time. It seems like whenever I get a bit of downtime and I pop on Netflix, I'm on my laptop and I totally wake in the middle of the night, thoughts flying around my head and... I know that when I need help and support, Charlotte is the person that I turn to. Aww. So thank you. So we're going to talk My about pleasure. that today because yeah, maybe if that's happening topic. to me, it's happening to other people. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So how are you going? I'm going really well. I've just decided to take three days off this week. And this morning I took my cat to the vet. I left my phone at home and it just dawned on me how, you know, in having the phone around, we just fill up all the little gaps of waiting with something. And yeah. of course, that adds to that busyness and the relentless attention on something. Whereas when I was just there waiting, you know, I was just there with her. And then I was waiting for the vet with the blood results. And I was just looking out the window. I thought, yeah, right. This is kind of gone the last 10 years of the phone. These little spaces, pauses. And of course, we train the, the, the brain through what we pay attention to, how we treat it, if you like, isn't it? So no wonder we're really, really overthinking and overfunctioning because that's what we're doing. Yeah. I can't really remember life before phones mm. when you would just sit at the bu- wait at the bus stop mm, and you exactly. would just have to sit there and mm-hmm. with nothing to occupy you. Mm-hmm. Or in a doctor's surgery, I suppose there are magazines. But, you know, all those times where we're sitting waiting. Mm-hmm. And now we, you're right, we jump on our phone and it's, okay, I'm going to scroll through Instagram, scroll mm-hmm. through Facebook. Oh, mm-hmm. Actually, my emails are on there. So I'm going to read an email and respond to that. You're yes. right, we're constantly on. Yeah, and we're sort of filling every little gap for the sake of what? You know, this is that human doing versus human being, right? Mm. You know, ultimately... You know, at the end of it, what are we racing for? The ultimate destination is death, right? So, you know, why, you know, why rush so badly? You know, this is it. This is it. So do you think that's the cause of a lot of overthinking these days is just we are constantly switched on with devices and social media? Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting when you look back on, on, you know, Buddhism and other insight, I suppose, modalities, which are really all about reducing suffering. And you're going, well, the same principles have always applied, right? However, right now, we have to add the additional point in for mental health, I think, which is about protecting the mind. So, so you know, we can do all the mindfulness, sleeping well, exercising, eating, and all that sort of thing. But if we're constantly on our devices, if we're constantly bombarded with the news and the worst news, etc., then it won't really work in calming ourselves down. So we need to really look at take a a stock, an inventory of how's this working for me? What do I want to pay attention to? At what point do I want to allow it into my life? And and when do I go, stop, I'm going to leave it by the door and I'm actually not going to look at it. I saw some research the other day that showed that, you know, our 
IQ is actually reduced by 5%, even just having the phone there and our memory by 10%. So, you know, it's really affecting the way we function. And in a way, it's a little bit like having a dog that's not trained. Would we just expose it to endless problems <laughs> yeah. and, and stimuli? Would we poke it, you know, every two seconds with something unpleasant? Because that's kind of what we're doing to the mind. So it becomes almost inflamed, irritated. So how do we protect it from that, right? Mm. And we have to take responsibility. It's a social problem. It's a cultural problem. But the solution right now is personal. Why is it that our minds chatter and overthink so much, like naturally? Because even I would say if you take away social media, mm. we do have that constant chatter going on in our minds mm. where we just kind of like have the internal dialogue, talking, talking, talking. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the nature of, of, of being human, I think, right? And, and it doesn't really matter if it's pleasant daydreaming. You know, if it's just going, oh, I wonder that. Oh, that's what's really nice. And it's the texture of it that bothers us, isn't it? Yeah. It's the texture of, oh, am I safe? You know, will I really get that done? Can I do it? You know, will they like me? Will they reject me? Will I say something stupid? It's that that matters. Because if it's calm and pleasant, it's not a problem. Would that be right? Yeah. Yeah. So- you probably don't notice it so much when it's calm and pleasant. Right. Want to fill your soul with more? Go to thesisterco.com. Hey, sisters. What's on Newcastle is now the place to go to check out everything that's going on in the city of Newcastle. So whether you're from out of town or Newcastle's hometown, What's On Newcastle will delight and entertain you. With a stack of the city's best entertainment options, be it theatre or sports or cinema or live music, all you need to do is just go to whatson.newcastle.newsouthwales.gov.au. So do you want to try a little experiment? Okay. So what I'd like you to do, and, and actually listeners, if you're, if you're driving, don't do this <laughs> because it does require closing your eyes. Yeah. But take a moment, just close your eyes. And from when I say go to stop, I'd like you to count how many thoughts that are being pumped out. Okay. Okay. So just start by just noticing the breath and allowing that out breath to be longer than the in breath. So just settling the system a little. And then from now, count the thoughts. And stop. Mm-hmm. How many did you count? Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> in my head, I was going, okay, count the thoughts. Mm-hmm. Okay, how many thoughts is that? Mm-hmm. Is that a thought? <laughs> yeah, I have a thought. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I don't know, like three, four or something like that. And it was it was the same kind of version of the one thought. Okay, I'm counting the thoughts. Mm-hmm. How many thoughts is that? Mm-hmm. Count the thoughts. But it's like I could hear that little voice, that inner dialogue. Yeah, right? Monologue. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Depending how many are living there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally. So, isn't that interesting that actually they become a little shy? When you really pay attention... That's the way to kind of control. That's not the right word, but that's the way to affect and influence them. Mm. When we're really going, oh, hello, Thorn. Oh, hello. Oh, that's mm. interesting. Because they become coy. Yeah. Right? Let's try another one, if you like. Yeah. So this time, I'd like you to really notice if you can, can actually observe the, the birth of a, of a thought. Okay. So the beginning of it. Okay. Okay. So close the eyes again. Longer out breath than in breath. Settling the system. You can also put the hand over the heart and just go to your body. It's okay. And then now start. Stop. Did you notice any thoughts being born? Uh, It was around... (laughs) <laughs> same thing yeah the same thing mm-hmm. there was a bit of a silence first and then i was like notice where the thought's coming from oh okay that's where that was the thought <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and if we then ask you know where do they really come from mm. what's before they're born that's a weird question isn't it it is a weird question yeah right Weird questions are good questions. I don't know. Right. We don't know, right? But is there a self? Can you control them? I think we can control them if we're conscious of it, but otherwise they just arise. Yeah. They just happen. Right. They just happen. Yeah. We can interrupt them once they're there, right? Yeah. But we can't really control what's being pumped out, can we? Yeah. We can settle the flow if we calm down, then there's not as many being pumped out and they're not as negative. So we can kind of influence the texture of them, but the thought itself, we can't actually stop it being born yeah 
So that then comes, okay, so how can I then create a context where it's the most pleasant thoughts that are being pumped out? That becomes the next question. So if we know thoughts are just being pumped out, yeah. how do we make them pleasant? Yeah, exactly, right? Because that's not a problem. Yeah. And, and naturally, the pleasant ones are not as incessant. So actually, then it becomes about making sure that we slow down a little, that we protect the mind from the negative and the relentlessness, mm-hmm. that we make sure we move. You know? Because I know some people, just from conversations that I've had or and articles that I've read, that, okay, when they have that inner chatter going on, mm-hmm. that sometimes it's not nice. It's actually really critical, like yes. self-critical, yes. critical of others, critical yes. of, of, yes. The, of the person thinking the thoughts. Yeah. You know, and then next minute you're wound up in anxiety and yes. well, it is a, it is an anxiety thing to have this the thinking like this, right? That yeah. is what it is. My point is just yes, we need to interrupt it when it's there, but we don't actually have control over what's pumped out. But what we have control over is the context that makes the unhealthy ones arise. Why does our mind just chatter? I remember when I first met you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I first met you. It wants to keep you safe. Yeah. Uh, I remember you said something and it really struck me because I'd never heard anybody say this before. I remember you you pointed out that our mind just goes, it just chatters constantly and that 95% of the thoughts are mm. crap. Yeah. And you were calling it the monkey mind chatter. Yeah, that's right. And I remember that, I found that really profound. I'm like, yes, you're right. 95% of the thoughts that I think are crap. Mm. And the, and the, there's no basis for a lot of them. No, and they don't make you who you are. And that's the biggest problem. Because if, they, if we're just kind of pumping out pleasant thoughts, there isn't a problem. The problem is we pump up toxic ones or self-shaming and not good enough thoughts, and then we believe it to be me. Like if we didn't believe it to be me, you just go, well, that's a freaking funny one. Mm. You know, we keep thinking that if we change the outside of our circumstances, if we, if we get the right person in our lives, the right house, the right job, the right whatever, clothes, whatever, then all would be well. And it struck me the other day, so I, I had the, the book deal of Mindful Leadership, which is really exciting. And that's what I've wanted for a long time, right? And then it's been a little while since I've heard from them and I could just notice the thought that came up went, what if they actually don't like what you've written at all? It's actually crap. And now they're going to axe you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I thought, oh, that's so fascinating. And the beauty is mm-hmm. that when, when you've been doing mindfulness for a long time, you just go, oh, that's a funny thought. And then, and then you're free of it, right? Yeah. But nonetheless, that it's pumped out this self-doubt, which is a relentless thing, right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that it's never the circumstances that'll make us happy because we take ourselves with ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, everywhere we go, there we are right? Boom, there we are. Boom, there we are. Boom. doesn't matter who you're meeting at an event. Boom, there you are, right? Yeah. So it is the inside job. And I think that it's useful to also see ourselves as living organisms. I think coming back to that is really, really important. I was in Mascot the other day working and there was just lots of concrete. I was just surrounded by concrete and I could feel the yearning for the bush. So a couple few days later, I was starting a retreat. I was walking in the bush and the thought that came into my head was, oh, Charlotte, now you're being naturalized. And I thought, yeah, it's the, the body yearns to be naturalized. And what's that about? It's about a we are living organism. And part of the conditions of living in a living organisms is that there is an endless pull away from danger, toxins, and towards pleasant. So if you put a little cell in a a Petri dish and you had a toxin one end and a nutrient the other, it would naturally move away from the toxin and towards the nutrient. And so that is what our mind is mapping. So this thing of going, not good enough, it's really because it's saying, (gasps) I'm scared that I might get rejected. When I'm endlessly preparing for the girls coming over for a lunch and I'm I'm worried about the sandwiches, I'm straightening the pillows, I'm doing the last little thing of the toilet, making sure there's nothing bad in the toilet. (laughs) It's really fear of rejection. And so that is a relentless thing, the fear and then so wanting and wanting to be included, wanting to be appreciated, wanting to get our needs met. And then when we're in the grips of that, which another word for that is the ego, right? When we're in the grips of that, we are in relentless chatter, right? And what we want to do is kind of step out of that imprisonment and start to take a breath and go, wow, there's sunshine outside. Let's get soulful on social media. Search the Sister Code Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. So how do we do that? How do we stop that? 
What habits do we need to, or techniques do we need to use to switch off? Well, first of all, know that it's not you. It's not you. That's They're one. Just, That's number one. No, yeah. it's not you. It's not you. It's just an arising. You're just a human being having a human experience, right? But also knowing that the context of your body is the primary context of your experience. So if you're rushing, if you're stressed, if you're not sleeping, if you're not eating well, if you're not moving, then you're likely to pump out really toxic thoughts. And yeah. this is a really, really important point because we tend to look at the end result, but actually it goes back further and go, wow, I didn't sleep well last night. I better watch the thoughts like a hawk and really keep going. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting, but not believe anything that's been pumped out. So I've had too many wines last night mm -hmm. and I'm feeling a bit dusty the next day. It's going to be hard to have lovely uplifting thoughts Indeed. when I feel like crap. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> so therefore it becomes the primary responsibility is to take care of the context of the body, of the context of our experience, sorry, which is the body, right? Yeah. And that also means if we get upset rather than wrecked, act out and go tell the person that we're angry at, with, oh, still and uncurring, we go, I need to calm down before I engage with this so I can think clearly and then not generate more drama, which I know will cost me down the track, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else? Anything else? Well, there's the protecting the mind, as we talked about before. So really looking at your overall pace of life and social media, media overall, there's that. Yes. There's the interrupting the thoughts and knowing they're not you. So if they're toxic, mm. in a way you can see it as, as if, there's a, if you're feeling overwhelmed and the thoughts are going crazy, it's your subcortex, which is the habitual, the reactive, in a scramble. They're in a wrestling match, those thoughts. Yeah. Now, are you going to take sides and believe in what they come up with? imagine it they're sort of the bottom dwellers if you're yeah. like <laughs> yeah no you they need it you need to be a stern mother and go that's enough that's enough and then take a breath and go when the prefrontal cortex ceo of the brain is on then we can come back to this issue right yeah so i think a little sternness with these thoughts doesn't hurt at all yes not cruel just firm and kind yes. right we don't need this nonsense going on and then take in the good. So really be aware of kindness, of, you know, be grateful, all those beautiful elements of life. Really be awake and aware of them and connecting with other gorgeous humans because all of that, A, comes, brings you back into reality, not just in your little imprisonment of life, yes. but also makes you able to serve and be of use to in this world. I have been talking on Hey Soul Sister with Rebecca Gibson about connecting with our soul and our soul versus mm -hmm. our ego. Mm -hmm. So in terms of this, that mindless chatter mm -hmm. that we have, that is coming more from the ego. Yes, it's yes. a self-imposed prison guard. Yeah. Mm. Self-imposed prison guard. Yeah. Yeah. When Beck and I were talking, we were going, when you're coming from the ego, you're coming from a fear place. Well, fear or wanting. Yes. There's a two elements. There's a pu two pulls, right? Yeah. You're either in, um, this is scary, or I really want that. And I don't care about you because I want that. I want the next, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most adoration, whatever it might be. Yeah. But then coming from that soulful place is coming mm -hmm. from the calm, loving Mm -hmm. kind space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also the place of wisdom because ultimately when we're just in the grips of i don't want or i want avoiding or, or attachment from a buddhist perspective then we're not in wisdom we're in the grips of our survival mechanisms mechanisms and wisdom informs us of that yeah. and we don't from that perspective get that everything changes all the time we don't get that we're interdependent there's so much we don't get yeah. So there's the wisdom wing and the compassion gratitude wing yeah. kind of to that way of functioning. Yeah. Want to save your soul? Review us on Apple Podcast. So Charlotta, so many of us get stuck in overthinking. Why is that and what do you think that indicates? I think it indicates that we are highly stressed, to be honest. Because it's not, as we talked about, it's not the calm thinking. And I, was, I, was, I bought the paper, not last weekend, the weekend before, and there was a whole interview about Michelle Bridges and how she's changing. And I was thinking, yeah, it's kind of the message is now that that relentless, if you, if you like, war with the self, that I must be super fit, I must have those biceps, I must get this, that the next moment is going to be better than this moment, that that's a little bit 10 minutes ago. 
I yeah. really think we're kind of getting to the end of that. And we're unwell as a result of it, the endless chasing. You know, when we get it all, we go, now what? Professor Paul Gilbert, I think we've talked about his work before. He talks about the three emotional regulation systems that we're always in one of them in the threat state, which is the, you know, things yeah. aren't right here, you know, and you either sort of fight or you uh, run or you tune totally out. And then the drive state, which is me and my task. And then the connected, contented. Now, in the Western culture, we tend to live in the drive state. I'm totally living the drive state. I know yes. I do. Yes. I'm constantly like, what's next? Where, where am I going to go? What am I going to do for the charity? I'm totally in drive state. Yeah. And the problem with that is you miss the present. And that's where life is. So, you know, it's kind of sad. It's quite tragic, yeah. right? Because when we are present, we can't generate anxiety. When we are present, we don't, don't generate those thoughts, right? So we want to kind of grab ourselves, our attention. When it goes next, 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 next minute, this minute, we want to go, can we come back to this moment? Can we come back? Because I did a session for some women the other day and I just asked them, so in 20 years time, when you look back on this time, how would you like to see it? And everybody says, I'd love to see that I was really present with my kids. I was really kind. And yet that's so not my reality. Yeah. My reality, I'm just, I'm not even there. Not even with those I love the most. Yeah. So how do we kind of, how do we ensure that we, we manage that state and invite in the connected, contented state, right? Because they are biological systems that we are in. And the temptation when we are surrounded by people in the drive state, sort of the anxiety state, if you like, the wanting, 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 is that it flares up in us. We're all contagious, right? Absolutely. And I can see is that, uh, you know, I have a number of friends who also operate from the drive state. Yeah. We're all striving for something, for different things, mm. for different reasons. Mm. And we probably all gravitate together because of that, mm. because we kind of are like, oh, yeah, I get that. I understand. Yeah. And I know that kind of like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, it's, um, I'm feeling stressed about this or whatever, but I really got to achieve that. And it's like mm. you're getting this to uh, like, a, a, I think you call it a hyperachiever, but mm. you get into that. Okay. I've got to achieve the next thing. Mm. I have, to, And I know I totally mm. sit in that space. Mm. And because of that, you're right, my experience of life is that I am on my laptop every night. Right. You know, doing work, catching up on emails, doing planning mm-hmm. with my husband beside me doing the same thing. And actually, we were just talking about this this morning when we do that. We're not actually just enjoying each other's company. No. We're not being in the present, mm-hmm. just enjoying each other. Yeah. It's like, uh, uh, we've got a hundred things to do. So we're going to, we'll do them side by side. So like, okay, so (laughs) we're kind of like in each other's company, which is, I guess it's a good thing, but we're not actually enjoying the moment. Engaging and feeling that connectedness. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I certainly feel that I need to be constantly, okay, especially in terms of got your back sister, right, what's the next project we're going to do? How are we going to get a message out there? How are we going to educate people? Mm -hmm. And so I'm always like, right, what's the next thing? How, what's the next forum or what's the next Mm -hmm. channel? What's the next project? constantly yeah and and in itself there's nothing wrong with that if it comes from a place of excitement rather than anxiety yeah. if you're going oh the possibilities and also that it needs to be tempered with appreciating where you're at in the moment yeah and that's what we often miss because it becomes <laughs> that mm. rather than going oh wow i mean take a moment to think about all that you've achieved yeah. and for everybody to do that yeah. you know and to to remind ourselves i'm a good enough mother I'm a good enough person. I don't have to prove it's I'm good enough. Yeah. Okay. So what I do now is kind of choice and I'm choosing to do these things. And that's exciting. Yeah. Like what is a good day's work? Where did, what is a good, I'm a good enough. Like what, where is that good enough line for me? Right. Yeah. Oh, my friend. It's a constant journey. Yeah, and it is, and I think it helps when we start to really befriend ourselves. Yeah. To go, I'm just a little human trying to work it out. Everything I feel and experience has been experienced by millions of other people. Mm. It is does not define me. I am not unique in this way. What is my responsibility is try to manage it, that that reactive, the ego, if you like, so I can access the bigger dimension of who I can be. Amen, sister. <laughs> okay, Miss Charlotta, do you have any retreats coming up? I will be doing one in Bunda Noon, probably in November. Mm-hmm. And I have one also at Golden Door, uh, which is now Elysia. I think it's October. I can't even remember. Yeah. Yeah. But so many exciting things coming, to, yes. to be honest. Now, I've done a number of Charlotta's retreats. They are amazing. They're two to three days of quiet self-reflection I always use it as a way to uh, reset a little bit reset my thoughts Mm -hmm. reset 
my life, uh, try and get some more calm and, and, and self-reflection to go, how am I going to do things differently and better? Yeah. And find, you know, I mean, because mm. that, that's another point around we have to take responsibility for calming the system so that that's what we get more of. Yeah. Because, the, you know, the brain changes through what we pay attention to. So the more we, <laughs> the yeah. more we'll get of that. So yes. retreat is a way of coming into, wow, there's another option. There's a way of living, appreciating the chickens, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sunrise, each other in calm and kindness and collaboration. Yes. So if people want to know more about you or the retreats, where should they go? They go to themindfulnessclinic.com.au and it's all listed there. Sign up to our newsletter. I just do articles uh, on this. And also, I'd really highly recommend that people find and play with little mindfulness practices. I've recorded on my website these mindful mini moments that are tightly guided so that, as we say, the, the overthinking needs interruption. And this is a perfect way to interrupt it. It brings you right down to calm. So mindful mini moments on the Mindfulness Clinic. Well, thank you very much, my friend. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Hey Soul Sister with Mel Histon. What would help you on your crazy life journey? Email melissa at thesistercode.com.